Namaskar. It is a privilege to welcome all of you to this virtual celebration of India's 72nd Republic Day here in Canada. I am Shafali Adhikari and on behalf of the Indian High Commission at Ottawa, I invite you to join me for the next hour for an amazing and colorful cultural journey. We begin with the national anthems of Canada and India. India's national anthem, Jana Ganamadam, was written by Nobel laureate and national poet Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore. The rendition we hear this evening is by Jeanette Dubey, a vocalist and former school teacher from Montreal. Jeanette has been learning the sitar from maestro Pandit Parthabos of Kolkata. Jeanette also sings in a classical choir. The beautiful and uplifting rendition of O Canada, the national anthem of Canada, has been performed by Ragini Singh, a graduate of Queen's University. Ragini has been learning Hindustani classical music since the age of five from her mother, the renowned Ramnik Singhji of Indoor Karak. Ragini plays the guitar and writes her own music and has been experimenting with amalgamation of different genres, pop, jazz, and R&B, to explore her own unique style. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love, in all our sons command with glowing hearts we see the rise the true north strong and free from far and wide O oh canada we stand on guard for thee god keep land glorious and free oh canada we stand on guard for thee oh canada we stand on guard Management 
at Princeton University. Mr. Nasaria was India's High Commissioner to Pakistan, Ambassador to Poland and Lithuania before coming to Ottawa. A Russian speaker, he has served as Joint Secretary in the Ministry and in Indian missions in Berlin and Moscow. He also served as the Staff Officer to India's Prime Minister, Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee, and has had a stint with the World Bank in Washington, D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to welcome India's High Commissioner, Mr. Ajay Basaria, to make his remarks. Namaskar. Honorable Anita Anand, Minister for Public Procurement, Government of Canada, and our Chief Guest today. Other dignitaries joining us today, Excellencies, Friends of India, Ladies and Gentlemen. It's a pleasure to connect with you all virtually to mark the celebration of India's 72nd Republic Day. The constitution we gave to ourselves on this day in 1950 not only provided us the structure of rule-based democratic governance, but also gave wings to the aspirations of millions of Indians with the promise of justice, liberty and equality. By introducing universal adult franchise without any distinction, it marked the single largest act of empowerment in history. The last 70 years have been a story of stiff challenges, but also determined development in India, as he brought prosperity and empowerment to over a billion Indians. These years have been years of growth in education and learning, of building infrastructure for a better life for our people. The last year was the year of the virus, the most severe challenge humanity has ever faced as we battled a pandemic that began in China, followed by an economic downturn that afflicted the entire planet. India's people and leadership faced this challenge with fortitude and strength. India came through as a reliable partner in maintaining vital global supply chains, especially of medicines, as we continue to play the role of the pharmacy of the world. With Canada, we work closely for pharmaceutical supplies. We collaborated in the safe evacuation of our citizens. So far, more than 50,000 people from Canada have been evacuated to India in our One Day Bharat mission and using the bilateral air bubble arrangement. India's resilience was on display as we battled the pandemic with strong discipline and vigilance from our people. India's active caseload has declined sharply and the per million infection rates are now one of the lowest in the world. We now look ahead with hope. 2021 should be the year of the vaccine. The capacities of the Indian pharmaceutical manufacturing sector today offer a ray of hope for the entire world as we kick off the largest immunization drive in the world. With 60% of global vaccine production capacity, India's role is crucial for equitable global availability of vaccines. Our Prime Minister has already pledged that India's vaccine manufacturing capacities will remain available to the entire world. Vaccines manufactured in India have already moved to our neighboring and key partner countries in the spirit of Vasudeva Kutumbakam, the world is one family. COVID-19 has disrupted normal life across the country. In India, the burden of this disruption was specially felt by the most vulnerable of our society. Our government's announcement of welfare measures ensured mobilization of relief and direct benefits to those who needed it most. We are determined to build back better, to place the welfare of our citizens at the center of our governments. Our government used this crisis presented by the pandemic as an opportunity to make deep and far-reaching structural reforms. The vision of Atmanirbhar Bharat, given by Prime Minister Modi, envisions India as a stronger, more integrated partner in global supply chains. A resilient India can be a buffer that helps humanity better absorb such shocks in the future. We introduced a production-linked incentive scheme to boost our manufacturing sector a new education policy to skill our youth for the new technology-driven age, 
agricultural reforms to unleash the potential of our farmers and double their incomes. These were some of the game-changing initiatives that our government rolled out even as we battled the challenge of COVID. At the same time, India's democracy is robust enough to discuss and negotiate the implementation of these reforms. Despite the massive shock to the economy, the green shoots of recovery are already visible. India hopes to lead a V-shaped recovery for the global economy in 2021. India and Canada are strategic partners. The complementarities in our production capacities, natural resources, demography and markets create multiple avenues for collaboration. We share values of democracy, multiculturalism, respect for rule of law, and a collaborative multilateral worldview. These dictate the logic of working together for global good. Our strong people-to-people -people relations create special ties. The dynamic Indian diaspora of 1.6 million is a well-integrated and well-respected part of Canadian life. It creates links that will sustain our relationship in the future. A symbol of the strength of our relationship is the return of the statue of Annapurna Devi, the goddess of nourishment for the body and soul. This statue was wrongfully picked up from Varanasi more than a century ago and is on its way back from Regina to India this year. Indian students now number well over 230,000 and are the largest foreign group in Canadian institutions of higher studies. The reforms in Indian education create further opportunities for successful collaboration in this key area. India's dynamic and growth-oriented market, its sound macroeconomic structure and a growing aspirational consumer base create excellent opportunities of investment already being used by Canadian investors and funds. Canadian investments in India now stand at over $55 billion from a mere $5 billion five years ago. The scope and extent of our collaboration are only limited by our imagination. This year, added to the challenges of the global pandemic, India has had to face other threats, including rising tensions on our borders. Indian military and diplomacy have successfully prevailed in meeting these challenges. The rights to assembly and protest are sacrosanct in India. We hold our democratic institutions and values to a higher degree of criticism, but we will not brook any interference in our sovereign and internal matters. The people of India are determined to defend and protect themselves from forces that are inimical to the unity and integrity of our nation and those that use intimidation and terrorism to achieve their goals. India will respond strongly and effectively to eliminate such threats. I hope that in the months to come, we will get over our current predicament and shall be able to celebrate our next National Day in person. I once again thank you for joining us today in this celebration of our Republic and invite you to stay on with us for an evening of Indian music, dance and cuisine. We pray for healing, friendship and peace. Jai Hind. Namaskar. Honorable Anita Anand is the Federal Minister for Public Services and Procurement. A Member of Parliament from Oakwood, Minister Anand is a scholar, lawyer, researcher and mother of four children. Born and raised in rural Nova Scotia, she studied at the Queen's University, University of Oxford, Dalhousie University and University of Toronto. As Canada's procurement minister, her role in ensuring adequate supplies of medicines, PPEs, and now vaccines has been stellar. Ladies and gentlemen, we now welcome Minister Anita Anand, the chief guest of our program this evening, to kindly address this gathering. 
Hello, my name is Anita Anand, the Member of Parliament for Oakville and the Minister of Public Services and Procurement. I would like to take a moment and wish you a very happy India Republic Day. January 26th is a day we come together to celebrate the birth of the Republic of India. The COVID-19 pandemic has made the past year very difficult. All countries have had to work together to protect their citizens, and this includes Canada and India. I would like to take a moment to thank the High Commission of India for its important work during these difficult times. The Government of Canada and I are so grateful for your enormous assistance in repatriating Canadians during the spring and early summer of 2020. In addition, I would like to thank Canada's High Commissioner to India, Nadir Patel and his team for your work in repatriating Canadians as well. The work of our leaders as well as our High Commissions exemplifies how we can come together as countries during the COVID-19 pandemic. I remember on this day, my parents who come from India, my mother, from the Punjab and my father who is Tamil and the lessons they taught me about the importance of celebrating Indian culture, Indian values and Indian traditions. I am so grateful to be a Canadian of Indian origin and will continue to share the importance of this culture throughout this country. Happy India Republic Day. All my very best to you and Namaste. India is one of the most colourful countries you will ever visit. We bring to you a slice of this colourful travel experience that awaits you in India in this next video, courtesy the Incredible India Campaign. Immerse yourself in the colours of India. In India, we commence all enterprises by invoking blood donation, the facilitator. 
we are delighted to present a beautiful Ganesh Vandana performance by two high school students from Ottawa, Simran and Arush. Do enjoy this mesmerizing dance performance. from Don Valley West and also the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. As a senior politician from Ontario, he has been part of several campaigns, both at federal and provincial level. His support for highlighting issues relating to mental health has been particularly significant. Honorable Oliphant has served as co-chair of Canada-India Parliamentary Friendship Group and continues to play a significant role in deepening India-Canada relations as Parliamentary Secretary of Foreign Affairs. It is a pleasure for us to invite a true friend of India, Honorable Rob Oliphant, to address this event. On behalf of Global Affairs Canada, it's an honour to join the many Canadian Friends of India for today's virtual celebrations on Republic Day. Thank you to our friend High Commissioner H. A. Basaria for this very kind invitation. Allow me first to salute the people of India on the 72nd anniversary of your Republic and your Constitution. This day gives us an occasion to celebrate the shared history we have as Commonwealth siblings, parliamentary traditions that we share, and the values that lie at the heart of Canada-India friendship. Of course, this year's celebrations are different and COVID-19 has challenged us all. But despite that, Canada and India continue to work closely together. For example, at the outset of the pandemic last year, we worked together to repatriate and reunite Indians and Canadians with their families. The Government of Canada worked to repatriate more than 27,000 Canadians and permanent residents of Canada, a number that speaks to the depth of the people-to-people -people ties between our two countries. 
That's 27,000 Canadians who were visiting in India who were able to get home. So on behalf of all Canadians, I want to thank India for its solidarity during that very, very difficult time. I also want to acknowledge the key leadership role that India has taken sustaining global supply chains of critical medical supplies and pharmaceuticals in this time. Those supply chains reach all the way into Canada and Canadians are grateful for your efforts. Together, Canada and India are also working to ensure equitable, timely and affordable access to the testing, treatments and vaccines that will help us end this pandemic. Let me emphasize, our current partnership though goes far beyond COVID-19. Across the Government of Canada, ministers and departments and senior officials are working with India on important global matters including trade, security, energy and climate change. There are more than 500 Canadian companies presently operating in India and more than 100 Indian firms have invested in Canada. And India continues to be our number one source country for new Canadian immigrants. They're joining more than 1.4 million of their fellow Indo-Canadians here. And that's good news for us. In the months and years ahead, I look forward to working even more closely with India to protect the health of our, our citizens, to rebuild our economies, to protect our democracies, and to strengthen the bonds of friendship. So on behalf of the Government of Canada, I wish you all a happy Republic Day my personal wishes are joined with the Minister Mark Garneau's wishes to all Indians who are celebrating today. The state of Rajasthan in India is known for its tales of valor and bravery, but also for its color and spices. It has its own distinct dance forms set to a lilting beat. In our next presentation, local Ottawa talent Muskan presents a wonderful interpretation of Rajasthani folk dance, Kalvelia, also known as the snake dance. Enjoy! <laughs> I'm not a man, I'm 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 a man, I'm
His Worship Jim Watson, the mayor of Ottawa, has on numerous occasions acknowledged the dynamism and energy that the Indo-Canadian community in Ottawa brings to the city. It is therefore a pleasure for us to have him with us today to share his views. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome His Worship, Mayor Jim Watson. I'm Jim Watson, Mayor of the City of Ottawa, and despite not being able to gather in person this year, it's a pleasure to give my best wishes to everyone who is virtually celebrating India's 72nd Republic Day on January 26th. India and Canada have long benefited from strong bilateral relations and shared values that are deeply rooted. I invite everyone in Ottawa to recognize the contributions that our Indo-Canadian community has made and continues to make to our city. On behalf of the City of Ottawa, I wish all those celebrating a happy Republic Day. Thank you very much and I still have very fond memories when I led a trade delegation to India and visited three of your magnificent cities. It was really an eye-opening experience for me and mutually beneficial for businesses in both India and right here in Ottawa. Thank you again and happy Republic Day. Dr. Vidhi Nagar is one of India's foremost scholars on the Kathak and dance form. Apart from being a top academician, she's also a well-known artist. Dr. Nagar was scheduled to visit Canada to perform live before our audiences here. But this program was unfortunately affected by the pandemic. We are thankful that she has agreed to share with us her performance virtually today. We thank both Dr. Nagar and the Indian Council of Cultural Relations for making possible this next performance. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Dr. Vidhi Nagar. A flower speaks that he has no desire of being untwinned in a jewel or being presented to a lover. Showered in a king's last rites and not even to be offered on heads of God and feel privileged but has a desire to be placed on the path of brave soldiers who sacrifice their lives for their motherland. Now presenting Matra Bhumi. चाह नहीं देवों के सिर पर चढ़ूं भाग्य पर इखला मुझे तो पथ पर देना तुम फेंक मात्रिभूमि पर शीश चढ़ाने जिस पथ जावे वीर अने जिस पथ Oh 
Honorable Chandra Khan, Chandra Arya, is our own MP from Nepal. Well known to us in the Orpa circles as a successful business leader, a strong pillar of the Indo-Canadian community, and a doting husband and father. His devotion to making the city of Ottawa a world-class metropolis is well known. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to invite Honorable Chandra Arya to address us next. I am Chandra Arya, Member of Parliament for Nepean. I would like to congratulate India on its Republic Day on behalf of all Canadians and especially on behalf of Indo-Canadians. This is an occasion to recognize the economic growth India has achieved during the last so many decades and also the political power it has accumulated in the world. Canadians recognize the importance of strategic relations between Canada and India. I will continue to work hard to improve and further strengthen the relationship between Canada and India for mutual benefit. Thank you so much. Trained in classical music, the Upadhyay sisters, Hanshu and Girinandani, are now a must-have element of all our community events in Ottawa. For our celebrations today, they have a soulful rendition of a patriotic song whose lyrics captures the sacrifices and passion of our soldiers who defend our nation's borders. Talwaro pe sarwar diye, angaro me jism jalaya hai, tab ja ke kahi hum ne sar pe, ye kesri rang sajaya hai. The song celebrates the symbolism of the saffron color as one well representing bravery and the sacrifice. Yeah. 
झूम के बंगड़ा पा न सक आबाद रहे वो गाँव मेरा जा लौट के वापस जा न सका Mr. Saroya has made his mark as a successful entrepreneur and now as a community leader and parliamentarian. Known for his outspoken and honest approach, we are delighted to welcome Honorable Bob Saroya to address us next. Namaste. My name is Bob Saroya, Member of Parliament for Markham Unionville. On January 26th, be commemorate the Republic Day of India. On this day, 72 years ago, we celebrated the proclamation of Indian Constitution. The Constitution not only created a democratic Indian state, but also outlined the noble goals of liberty, equality, and justice. These are the shared values that we here in Canada also cherish. As large rule of law based democracies, Canada and India celebrate each other's democratic success and spirit of freedom. Canada and India are strategic partners and there are much our two nations can do together to be a voice for good on the world stage. I would like to extend my best wishes to the Indian High Commissioner in Ottawa, as well as the Indian Consul General in Toronto. I look forward to Canada and India developing deeper and closer ties based upon our shared commitments to democracies, the rule of law, and mutual values. During these difficult, unprecedented times of COVID-19, I trust everyone is keeping safe and doing their part to stop spread the virus. I look forward to, to celebrating the next Republic Day in person with many friends and colleagues. Thank you. Please stay safe. Our next performance comes from General Performing Arts. A team of timeless dancers that fills the cultural gaps between the Eastern and Western arts and conveys the message of unity and diversity. Karina, Shaoni, and Kavindi bring a contemporary take on Punjabi song Challa. Please enjoy this performance. Hello, <laughs> से जुनू तक है जाना हर कतरा बोल रहा
ਤੇ ਜਨੂ ਤੱਕ ਹੈ ਜਾਣਾ ਹਰ ਕਤਰਾ ਬੋਲ ਰਹਾ The state of Punjab is the vibrant beating heart of India and nothing represents Punjab's energy as Bhangra dance does. A high energy folk dance form which began as a celebration of harvest season has now become the universal medium of expressing joy and celebrating life. The Sone Yaar Punjab Day Bhangra group was formed in 2013 by local youths in Ottawa. This was to promote Punjab's cultural expression in the national capital. We have for you next a high octave performance by the SYPD team capturing the energy and dynamism of Punjab. of India I thank all of you our chief guest our guests of honor and our special invitees for joining us in these celebrations this evening we also thank all the artists and performers who despite the restrictions of the pandemic worked to put together this cultural show we thank all of you for joining with us this evening namaskar